Hello, welcome back. Man, I like these breaks. I go and learn some cool things. We, If we talk about Demigod later, I got some knowledge. Uh, welcome on back. In fact, Carlin, I hadn't seen you in a whole round, so welcome back. Been hiding, enjoyed, yeah. Enjoyed, enjoyed your round off. And we have a bonus person with us. I'd like to welcome Sam Black to our cast. Hello. He's he's shy, but he's uh, he's coming. Okay, I lied. <laughs> Sam's not here. No worries. He will be here shortly. It's possible we're in the future for Sam, but we'll figure that out. <laughs> we do have Sam on, which will happen in a second, to talk about some cool things. Uh, let's recap why we're, we're grabbing a, a mystery cool person on, and that's to talk about our um, bonus feature. So we have a lot of players here showing up to play some magic. Um, we do have prizes for top eight. We've gone over that. That's super sweet. Um, but we have some cool things. We have these bonus um, different amounts of, or three different um, amounts. Nope. Mm -hmm. Prizes. There we go. Up $10 each for the mythic, mythicstore.com store credit. And there's three categories. So we have best choice, which is just kind of like the best deck. Who showed up? Who solved it? Who broke it? Best deck. We have sweetest brew. I had some choices with that, so I'm pretty excited. Uh, and then we also just have most powerful deck that isn't best choice. Third time running this, I still have not managed to get that title changed. I need a better title. <laughs> <laughs> but basically saying, you know, we have all these great decks. We had a best deck. What's second best? What's also up there? What's pretty cool? Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully we can get our Sam Black uh, situation solved. Um, I assume Sam will just start talking when we're good to go. Um, did you, so we don't know what Sam's picked yet. Um, we we want to be in suspense, but do you have anything on your mind, uh, Carlin? Like what, what's something, like what's a brew that you saw that you're pretty excited for? Brew? Uh, I I mean, I wouldn't say it's a brew. I would say, I, I guess it could go under like, it it didn't do perform well, but Boomer Control looked sweet, but it didn't really perform well. Maybe so. I guess that could go for like most powerful deck that isn't the best choice. Like it was doing a lot of powerful things, but it just wasn't quite enough to actually get there. And this is sorry. This was the demigod deck. The boomer control. Oh, the boomer Astro, control, astral sorry. slide. Oh yeah, that you would pick that. Of you course. In the beginning, you would pick that because it's because it's doing lots of powerful things, but it just kind of wasn't enough to get there. Okay, so I have a quick question. Um, why, like, what, what is the reasoning for labeling it Boomer Control, other than being funny? Uh, uh, why is it well, saying, like, why is red, white control? Mostly probably to be funny, but also just running for Wrath of God is very Boomer. Okay. Uh, since that's, if anybody that's played Magic a long time, like, you'll hear Mangu say it. It's just, it, that's like uh, the colloquial slang for, like, any Wrath effect now. It's just Wrath of God. Oh, uh, okay. So you I just hear connection okay yeah and astral slides a card that was a it's a boomer favorite so it's boomer control because it's just running boomer favorites like kind of <laughs> okay yeah because to me it was interesting that you know a deck got labeled uh boomer control in the sense that it was a red and white deck yeah and that's not really a classic control combo strat um, and I felt like the things I know about old magic mean blue is usually the control. So I wasn't really following it. But you yeah, know, it's you... just a it's just a node to like boomer cards that people like that also did see some play in certain control decks, but definitely not overall a traditional control deck. Like Kitchen Finks didn't exist in traditional boomer control, but you know, Astral Slide and Wrath of God and stuff like that did. So it's kind of like a little bit half and half, I guess. Okay, so we are going to pivot a little bit just um, while we are working on some audio issues. You know, I know you're all super excited to hear about our um, three winners of our bonus things. But let's talk about the act the tournament that we are playing. We actually do have a top eight, I think. Like, to my knowledge, we're, we're done mm -hmm. with round six. I should see... Uh, yeah, so I, I see 18 points. That's six and oh. So... Um, yep. I think if the producer gods will have it, they might be able to show you the top eight in a second. Oh, wow. Showing top eight right now. We're great. Okay. Wow. And it's loud in here, but that's okay. <laughs> I, uh, I also, <coughs> excuse me. I also did enjoy the, uh, there was my favorite. What did you have a favorite deck name that wasn't boomer control? Okay. So <laughs> I, I did. I was recovering from some distractions, but, uh, 
I really liked Mono Red Elves. I've come I've come full circle on it. Mono Red, Red Elves is in our top eight, which we'll sh- which we'll talk about. Um, but DC Sports named their deck Mono Red Elves, which is very confusing because they're both red and green cards. Right. But I've come around on it. Did you have a favorite? Yeah, I liked uh, Chain of Plasma Go Bird. Because oh, uh, it's you know it's a reference to that meme uh, Go Burr, where you just <laughs> where you just smirk smirk <laughs> down. I like it. I know that where where my pants was also a, a good a good deck list name. So let's look at these players. Like we got so uh, some of these deck lists I think I can remember. So we have green red beatdowns, uh, which I think is really just very similar to the mono red elves list, if I'm correct. Um, yeah, it, it's very similar. They're just this green red aggro deck, uh, so it's pretty cool. They're six and zero going in first place. We have second place. We have Isaac with where's my pants, which is a green white creature deck. Uh, without any pants, without any enchantments. Um, we have DC Sports with re- Green Red Beats as well. Um, Philip, which we've been watching, I think we saw Philip a couple times with the Grixis Swan deck. Um, pretty cool in fourth place. We have Fabian with uh, also Grixis Swans? Question mark? No, no, no. Fabian was on. Oh. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> sorry. Fabian was on um, just the usual Swan Seismic Assault deck as well, which was we saw a lot of. Um, but he had the Bloodbraid Elf to uh, try to always cascade into half your combo piece, which is nice. You get a beater with haste plus that. And then uh, we saw also in top eight, uh, I, my favorite deck was the uh, Oversold Cemetery Demigod Revenge deck with Buried Alive. So you just go get Buried Alive, put some Demigods in the bin, Cycle some cards, and, uh, you know, here you go. Wow. Bob's your I uncle. did not know I disappeared. Sorry. Um, so, yeah, we're at, we, I think I covered Bastion. You took over for me. Then we have Alex on. Mm-hmm. A, I just, I guess, like a Jund list. Yeah, what I'm good old here? Maelstrom yeah, Pulse so Jund amount. And then we have Ari sneaking in at eighth place uh, with four and two. And uh, Ari is playing the uh, God Pharaoh's Gift deck, which we saw a couple different times. Mm-hmm. So pretty cool top eight. Um, so I think. Okay. So I think what we're going to do is, unfortunately, you may have noticed Sand Black did not join us. We did not trick you. Uh, we are scrambling Bye. and trying to figure it out. Oh, oh there he is. or I've been tricked. <laughs> wow. Just, he has the right. Wait until I said that we don't have Sam Black to appear. <laughs> just kidding. We have Sam Black. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Hi. That's okay. How's it going? Good. I mean, my usual uh, tech incompetence uh, has been resolved. I uh, managed to figure out testing all of the various options in my speakers until I found one that worked, and I'm here now. Awesome. Perfect. Luckily, I'm very good at vamping. So here we are. Um, so Sam, we do we are trying to get uh, top eight firing. So let's kind of go yep. straight into it. Let's. So I'm gonna quickly recap. Tell everyone what you're doing, and then uh, we'll go through one by one. So we're you're handing out. You've spent like hours and hours slaving away at looking at all the deck lists. I assume. Yeah, um, a few or, minutes. Yeah, sure. Uh, and you're gonna highlight some your best choice, your sweetest brew, uh, and then two or a deck that you know isn't quite the best choice but still pretty powerful that makes sense uh yeah okay. at least i mean i hope it made sense to me since that's the criteria i was using when i made my selections let's go for it. um so why don't you give us maybe like a little overview of what you saw just in general you yeah, yeah. let me things. let me i'll just talk through my process if you don't mind so, um yeah, five minutes Spill yeah so everything. uh basically i just uh clicked through um not all of the deck lists, uh, but uh, all the deck lists that were doing reasonably, uh, you know, in round five or whatever, I uh, looked at about 30 of the decks. And um, I basically, you know, identified some patterns, some various like cards that people were drawn to frequently and were building around and, you know, made a list of the various archetypes where people were playing, uh, things that stood out that people were doing. People were building around Swans of Grant Argyll in some fashion with seismic assault in all cases uh there are various like jund or jund ish kind of like mid-range blood braid elf with more than two colors type decks often with the scarab god 
There are some kind of generic control decks. There was like mono red aggro, red green aggro, God Pharaoh's gift uh, decks, cycling decks. Um, and then there are a few different ramp decks. Um, and uh, when I'm the judge, uh, you're not going to get any points for, uh, you know, slotting good creatures and efficient spells onto a curve. Um, I'm looking for decks that uh, do something interesting, um, find ways to use the various cards that are available to build something, you know, greater than some of their parts or pretty cool rather than just like, all right, well, you've, you've figured out which one drops and two drops were better than the other one and two drops and you put the right numbers in to build a red egger deck. Like, that's a respectable way to win some matches, but it's not going to win you any judging contests that I'm a part of. <laughs> um, so then looking for people who are doing sweet things, um, I really liked... Um, so the deck that I chose for uh, Best Brew was... or the Is that the name of the category? I think it's uh, called Sweet. Best Choice. No, Best Choice. Oh, Best Choice. Uh, okay, okay. Yep. So um, this one, I felt like... You know, best choice has to be informed reasonably substantially by the standings. So uh, hopefully, um, Fabian Field, or I hope that's the correct pronunciation of that last name, Works um, for me. didn't uh, crash and burn after when I saw the standings, but it looked like uh, Fabian was doing well. And um, I liked what's going on here. I liked that it was more all in than the other Swans decks. Um, and I really liked, in particular, the use of cycling lands to uh, get the land count super high while just being able to uh, cycle to find the pieces. Um, there were some other Swans decks that weren't using cycling lands, and I felt like that was a, a big oversight for the decks that weren't. Um, and there were just like various other things about uh, some of the more all-in Swans decks that I didn't like, whereas this... This one really reminded me of the like standard version of this combo deck um, that existed uh, for a while um, in a good way, uh, but in a way that made useful additions of, in particular, the other lands that were available. I really like the use of Lotus Veil um, to make uh, Seismic Assault castable off whatever you happen to have, um, and I really loved uh, the Cycling Lands. So, um, I liked that this deck was doing something fairly interesting that, you know, identified combos in the format rather than just like individual like cards that were just, you know, above rate uh, or like better at their spot on the curve than the other cards in the format. And I really liked its use of uh, So between uh, just being a well-made version of a good combo deck and doing well in the tournament, I felt like that was a reasonable choice all Cool. Um, do you have like a, so the next category is sort of this, we'll skip the sweetest brew for a second. We'll go to kind of the best choice that isn't the best choice. <laughs> yeah, the strongest um, deck that wasn't the best choice. So to me, that's a deck that's like doing something pretty cool, but might not have fit the metagame perfectly. Um, like, you know, this is a like good coherent deck building effort, but, you know, with a tournament like this where you're playing, you know, it's like week one of a format, basically, right? Like, just people don't know what other stuff people are going to bring. It's just like, find something sweet and hope it lines up well. So this is a category to my that, to my mind, is for someone who did a great job of finding something sweet, but it happened to not line up well. Uh, for whatever reason, What it, its strength didn't play to, you know, the pressures that the format put on uh, decks. Um, and so while it might have, like, been an internally consistent strong interesting deck it might not have done as well in the tournament um that was my understanding of what i should be looking for here um and also you know some amount of like points just for like doing something different than what other people are doing like this is a place in my mind to give credit for like finding you know one level down like something that's not the most common like interesting combos that people find or whatever and so um my choice for this one was kind of the one uh, green ramp deck that I saw. Um, this was, uh, I sent it to you. I'm trying to remember. Oh, it's Joshua uh, Barsh. Bar? Bausch? <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, so I, I posted the, the link in that in that Discord there. Um, okay. So it's this mono green. Yeah, it's oh, like a it's green, green black. It's, actually. Right, it's like green black Tron. Um, yeah. There was one other player uh, who was just on stream, I believe, who was playing mono blue Tron. Um, but this is a very different. Like that was more like mono blue that incidentally has some Tron, right? Like there's no way to find the Tron lands in mono blue. It's just like see if I draw them and then I can you know, do some more explosive stuff with my mana, and I'm mono blue, so the colorless lands don't hurt me that much. Mm -hmm. This deck was, you know, actually finding Tron with Hour of Promise, um, and it didn't need to Tron to ramp, and then uh, Torment of Hailfire is kind of its, like, big finish, right? Like, it's just a whole bunch of ramp spells, some removal. I really liked the inclusion of Ensnaring Bridge, and then it just tries to, like, use Hour of Promise to assemble Tron and just get a bunch of mana and then Torment of Hailfire someone to death, which is, I felt like, a pretty, you know, unusual way to uh, approach, like, what do I do with all this mana in a format where the normal go-to mana sinks aren't available? And um, I just thought that this was, like, a pretty clever way to handle uh, building a ramp deck in a format where it was clear that some big mana stuff was available, but less clear what to do with it. Yeah, this is this is right up my alley. This is, I'm sure, if I had this list, this is what I would have played. It looks really fun. I love Our Promise. What a card. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Thanks, so sweet. we covered some powerful stuff. What, what's the spicy, what's the sweetest thing that you saw today? Well, so for Sweetest Brew, I actually, you know, again, like... you. The goal is to win, right? Like, I'm not looking for someone who built, like, some, you know, funny theme deck or something. Like, if you're, like, the sweetest deck, uh, part of being a sweet deck is, in a competitive setting is doing something that actually works. Um, so uh, here I'm looking for both, like, cool interactions, different approach than other people, while still also being, you know, competitive and functional. Um, so I didn't know which player to award this to because two players had the same deck, um, and that's uh, Remy Fortier and um, uh, Bastian Perez uh, S.A.L. or something along those lines. Yeah, that's um, great. And uh, this deck was uh, red-black... Uh, Lightning Rift, Oversold Cemetery, a mm -hmm. uh, bunch of cycle, like Red Black Cycling. But um, I really liked the use of Buried Alive, Demigod Revenge, Oversold Cemetery with Cycling Creatures and Lightning Rift, and the way that all these different pieces play together, right? Like Buried Alive both like turns on your Oval Oversold Cemetery. Um, it also just turns on the Demigod. Like if you draw one Demigod of Revenge, you Buried Alive the other three, and then you like have this, you know, five mana, 20 damage combo. But yeah. if you don't draw a Demigod of Revenge, you also just get to, you can like bear it alive for like Demigod, Demigod, one mana cycler or something, and then set up this like oversold cemetery cycler draw engine. You also don't need buried alive to set up the oversold cemetery engine. You also like have lightning rift with all these cycling things. Um, you have like vile manifestation as another payoff for cycling or for just like buried alive to put cycling things in your graveyard. Um, so I liked that this deck had, you know, like synergies on top of synergies where it's cards, like it's not like they just identified a single combo. They identified various like packages and clusters where cards worked well with, you know, in groups like this works well with this and this, and you don't need all three of these, just any two will do something good. Um, so I felt like this was a, you know, very like tight coherent deck that did something a little different and interesting and had just kind of a bunch of like small scale synergies and like generally good cards yeah we actually saw this uh deck a couple times and one of them is in the top eight so i think it did yeah. did a good job that was easily my favorite deck of the tournament that was super cool Sweet, Sam. Thanks so much. Uh, I really appreciate your insight on how you picked our second category. Our second cat or our category of like, like uh, strongest deck that isn't the strongest deck or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. the worst title in the history of ever. Um, <laughs> that that's a really hard one to pick because it's like you don't want to pick just the second, like best deck. 
the way you worded it was really cool. Like you kind of said like, hey, this deck on paper is a like pretty powerful thing that this person approached the format as. Unfortunately, it didn't fall their way, but I get kind of where they were coming from. And that was a cool way to approach that that topic. Um, yeah, I think it's just like really category. easy to build. So like, cool. oh, this is like a deck that would beat mid-range decks. Oh, but no one's playing mid-range decks. They're playing faster combo decks. So it's not going to do that well because like the faster combo decks will beat it, but it's mm -hmm. maybe more resilient against control decks or something like that. And it just ended up the metagame broke the wrong way. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. I also yeah. appreciate you taking the time to join us for today. Uh, dole out some sweet, sweet store credit to themythicstore.com. Um, and I really hope that you enjoy hanging out or uh, enjoy watching the top eight. Um, see if some of your predictions come through because Fabian is also in the top eight. So you have uh, two of your deck winners are battling it out. So that'll be pretty exciting. Um, and for us, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to let everything settle, get all those top eights uh, ready to go. Uh, and we'll see you all back here in about four minutes. Bye. Okay. All right.
All right, everybody, we are back. Got the top eight here. Um, what are you excited to see, uh, Power Dragon? What do you think? I know we saw the green red beats uh, is in top eight, so I'm pretty sure you're excited to see that. I am excited because we have a format where two beatdown decks finished one and two in our standings. So it's pretty hard to be upset about that, honestly. <laughs> yeah. I saw that. We got a lot of swans, a lot of swans flying around too. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know if they just dodge a lot of bullets or their sideboards worked out perfectly, but yeah, this is cool because when you looked at all those other decks we saw early in the event, had no way to know that this is what the outcome was going to be. I'm very excited to see where are my pants. Uh that that does looks pretty sweet with Shield of the Oversoul and Appeal Authority and just a lot, of, you know, got some pants, some dudes and some pants. Yeah, and that's a little interesting, too, because they get to play against one of the other aggro decks in the top eight. So it's going to be kind of yeah. interesting to see how that works itself out. All right, let's see who we've got featured first here. We'll jump right in. All right, Luca Moretti versus Ari Lax. So Feature we're match one. Pair, looks like turn three for Luca here. Oh, you're going in ten. Got it. I was gonna watch. I could watch Ari's side. We can get both ways, but <laughs> <laughs> he should probably be synced up. All right, mine is loading. Yeah, this I is a big deal too good. because being the number one seed, you know, the number one player gets to pick player draw. Oh yeah, kind of kind of important. Oh. <laughs> All right. Let's All right. Looks right like we should get. be good here. Well, we'll see what's going on here. Well, we uh, did have an aggressive start. <laughs> All right. There we go. And this is against Ari Lax, and Ari is on, let's just pop, pop the top eight here. Uh, Ari is on God for his gift, so not a Swans deck. Yeah. But, uh, and he doesn't have a interesting choice. He does have two Wrath of God in the side and two in the main, which could probably be a bit of an issue uh, for an aggro deck. Possibly, but he, there are a fair amount of haste creatures on the side of the table, so even if you mm -hmm. do wipe the board, you know, being able to just punch through is pretty big, but it looks like just going to concede there, getting a restoration on a big lifelinker looked like that was going to close things out. Uh, let's see. What do you think the What do you think the sideboard is going to look like here? Uh, let me take a look because there's a big situation here that Ari has the ability to get the big Sphinx in, and with the Sphinx being pretty effectively protection from Luca's deck, like it's it's going to be hard to punch through that. Mm hmm. Uh, it looks like, and since this is this is Ari here, uh, he has the main deck. Sphinx of the Steel Wind. We saw some of these decks running three in the side. Ari just said, you know what? This is a really good card, so we're just going to run four in the main. Uh, <laughs> that, that, that might be a little bit of an issue. And four, four Kitchen Sphinx as well. So this this deck is a little bit more set up to deal with aggro. And uh, not including the main deck Wrath of Gods. And then you have the uh, Restoration card as well to just, like, you can ride through on board and then just bring your Sphinx back. Uh, so it's got a, it looks like he's, he was ready for aggro, uh, and, and a little bit of combo too with the, uh, with the man, main deck mana leaks, you know? Yeah. And this is a little bit of a tough situation for sideboarding. I mean, I'm not sure which way Luca wants to go because maybe you just try to blood moon and slow the opponent down or bring in your fulminator mages just do what you can to let your smaller creatures kind of just punch their way through while the opponent has to stumble a little bit to mm -hmm. try to get those big sphinxes that you're afraid of. 
Ari does have eight total basics. Um, so not a lot, but enough where you could play around a Blood Moon, but it, it would definitely be a hindrance, uh, considering there's four island, three planes, and just a single swamp, uh, which swamp's probably not going to be relevant. I think that's kind of just a free roll. If uh, sure. you ever have to just cast Sphinx of the Steel Wind, I think Ari wants to be able to do that. All right. Looks like we kept six there is what we came back to. So... This isn't a bad start here, though. I mean, you, you're you going to have a haste creature on two for two damage. Uh, possibly just try to fulminator, slow the opponent down, potentially. Yeah, definitely. I, I could see it, or I could see Mud Brawler next turn to boost uh, the other creature as well. And then maybe fulminator, or you could f uh, play fulminator, attack, uh, and then and then sack it. Uh, but Ari might be playing around a Blood Moon. We'll f <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Fulminator as well, since he fetched exactly those basics we were talking about. And he's probably not really ever worried about the Swamp in this matchup. So Ari might just try to completely play around Fulminator if he can. Yeah, smartly done. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you can play around something, you might as well. Yeah, and here we are just going for the more aggressive attack because Fulminator doesn't really do much here. Uh, yeah, it's a 2-2 two, two for 3, which is not really the very good deal. Plus, this is just putting more power. This is 6, more power on the board. Yeah, you put Ari down it... to 12. And so you've got half the life, or half the damage you need already on the table. Yeah, kitchen, the kitchen, the kitchen sink. Yep. Uh, oh, kind of a bane of aggro decks. It's just got a lot of relevant abilities. And uh, the body is pretty good at trading with most things. Uh, but Fulminator Mage is going to take care of that land. Yeah, you and, just get in there with everything. Send in, uh, as Mango says, just send in the team. <laughs> just <Yep. laughs> keep keep attacking. I mean, it's not a lot you can do. With the, I mean, you did all that attacking, and the opponent still ended up at 12. So that's a little bit mm -hmm. disheartening. Yeah, and that's definitely one of the issues of just being ready with uh, main deck Kitchen Sphinx. It's oh, just, and a second one. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's brutal. Make it it's real difficult. All right. Flame Javelin is uh, definitely a card. It's, it's interesting because I just think you, at this point, you do really have a choice but to just keep attacking and trading off and hoping Ari runs out of, out of Sphinxes. Maybe. Uh, his deck has Maybe. ways to dig, though. And it's like he's never going to run out of card advantage first over the yeah over exactly. the aggro deck that does the draw cards. Yeah, this might be end up being a pretty quick one. Yeah, I, I mean Ari being at fifteen and basically he got he got fulminator maged, but I mean other than that, he's got all his basics in play, which is just kind of ruins. You know any top decks for uh, land destruction? Well, even beyond that, like he kind of exhausted Luca's resources at this point, and he's still at fifteen. Yeah, so that's not... that's a safe number. <laughs> that's a very safe number. I think it would take a chain of maybe Bloodbraid Elves. Uh, uh, as actually, let me double check. I might have just said something. It's not in this deck. No, it is. Um, yeah, if he, if he were to rip like. Blood braid into Ram Gang and then another Blood braid into something maybe, but that's probably yeah, the only I way you're getting out. Yeah, I think that's about the. That's probably the only way out is every spell you're going to have to cast is going to be a two for one because that's what Ari's going to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we're holding uh, this flame javelin, but it doesn't do a whole lot at this stage. Yeah, Flame Javelin is just... Yep. Well, I mean, we get an Unearth. That's nice. That's. Uh, I mean, it's a Mana Sink, right? It's haste. Yep. You know, it's something to do. And it's totally reasonable. I mean, that is four damage. Yeah. It's... I mean, Unearth is great when you're in matchups like this, where at least when you get Wrath or you just run out of stuff. The problem is Ari is just not really going to run out of cards. No, <laughs> At least it doesn't state. feel like that. Strategic planning with Kitchen Sphinx is very nice, by the way. It's so cool to be able to 
put that X on there and then sack your kitchen sphinx, gain two more life, and just do what you need to do. You know what's interesting? I was wondering, like, did Luca want to discard the flame javelin and see if maybe knowing that you're going to have to try to find something, like we're talking about, like a blood braid elf or something of that nature at this stage of the game? Yeah, I'm not sure. I think the plan is to just keep... Uh, the problem is he's not really getting any damage in, and Ari's just going draw card, draw card, draw card, filter, mm-hmm. filter. And that's okay. Well, yeah, that's going to yeah, do it. There we go. <laughs> so it turns out it turns out that that's a pretty good magic card against uh, red. Red green decks have trouble dealing with the protection from uh, red and red and green. <laughs> yeah, and you know this is kind of what happens sometimes in a limited format, right? Like you you do have you know these sets to choose from, but you do have to look and say, okay, what are the worst possible things for me? And sometimes you probably end up having to play one or two really weird or bad cards to give yeah. yourself a chance. Like in this case, maybe, you know, the red green deck needed to be looking for some type of artifacts to give themselves a shot to either remove the graveyards or, you know, exactly. like a Tormod's Crypt or something. I have to go back and see what's available. But I mean, something on that level to even give you a shot, you know, of not dying in those situations. Yeah, it's always. It's always interesting just the way you can have to make such interesting if maybe wrong, but greatly rewarded if you're correct, meta calls. <laughs> oh, for sure. All right. Chop into Fabian here. See what we got going on. I smell some swans. Smell some swans cooking. Yep. So we've got swans against the, uh, well, against swans is what the, we have going on here. The old, the old swan v. swan. Uh, and it's Grixis swans versus... What's... Ah, yes. It's so the one... that This is the one that's all in on the 42 versus the yeah. 25 lands. So it'd be interesting to see who wins. Because last time uh, we saw that the Grixis swans deck really didn't get there because they just couldn't do enough to stop the... Uh, 42 land the 42 swans <laughs> well yeah so this this is interesting i don't know i mean i guess you bring in like hour of glory you know because it just outright exiles and can break up a combo yeah i i think you have to the risk in this matchup as we saw a couple games ago is you end up both playing the same deck, but one of you is better at finding your pieces because you're all in, sure. uh, which is the 42 lands, right? So you kind of, if your opponent plays a Swans and you play Seismic Assault, you're the first, like, you, you kind of just run this risk of you have 42 lands, so there's a bigger chance you're not going to go out first, right? You're not going to yeah. brick on something to pitch. All right, this is an interesting hand to start with here. I don't know if it's a snapper, but it's something to consider. <laughs> I mean, you're land away from getting used a blood braid elf, so that's something, I guess. Mm-hmm. And uh, we know that the Grixis deck is going to have an issue. Like, they're going to bring in... They have mana leaks and terminates, and... So it, it would be reasonable to just keep a hand... Uh, where you have a lot of double value. Yeah. Because they're going to one for one you, or try to most of the time. We're setting up a Mind Stone here on two, just kind of building his mana a little bit. And we didn't, oh, we didn't, weren't able to cycle. That's a two mana cycler, so we couldn't have done that. Yeah, it's one of the, um, it's a two mana cycle. It's not quite a good, a good, as a good of a deal. <laughs> This is interesting, too, that the gemstone mine came down here instead of, like, the mountain or the city of brass. Yeah, I don't know if it's to preserve life total or just, you know, casting mountain is safer. I think you have basic access to most of your colors. Uh, one reason I could see is they have the card that shuffles your, like, uh, is it your library back? I think it's just your lands back into your hand or uh, library. 
from your graveyard, so they might want to use it as many times as they can while not taking damage. And mm. then, it's like, that's the only thing I could probably think of, but that's probably fairly marginal. Yeah, I. this is interesting. Taking a different line than I would. I would have probably just played the mountain there and then just cycled away the desert since I already have four mana in hand. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I feel like I mean, I guess the you ways... still need... Well, yeah, because you would still have access to the double white when you needed it, too. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I'm not really sure what the line or the thought process was there. I also just feel that not doing anything till turn four against your terminate mana leak opponent is not really uh not very good i don't know what the fastest start would be but yeah i don't think it's that <laughs> yeah, like i said it just feels weird here that you're gonna have to give up a counter off of this gemstone mine for no reason really because mm -hmm. i think when either person wins this match they just win the match uh i don't know if the sure. Two damage is really, you know, the one damage they taken from the brass would have been like insane. But both things resolved. So also we, very awkward. <laughs> we might, yeah, we might just. I it'd be crazy to just go. I do nothing on turn till turn four. Then I play bread braid, get seismic, and then next turn I swan you. Like it doesn't seem likely, but it. It is feeling likely. But is Swans, like, do you end up in a game of chicken in this match if you're playing Swans? <laughs> my, since you, I, I, since I, you both have Seismic yeah. Assault, right? Like, you try to discard and go off. Your opponent's like, fine, I'll discard, like, three things. You discard a thing. I'm going to discard a thing. Well, now I'm drawing my cards first. And uh, yeah. maybe load my hand up and can go off. <laughs> Especially if you're the one with, with you know, 40 lands, right? Uh, exactly. Oh, consign is nice. Ooh. Okay. And then this swans might get terminated. after They, they might draw a couple cards first, right? And then yeah. terminate the swans, and that seems like a pretty good deal. That's what I assume is going to happen here. At yeah, least you'd... one or two triggers at the swans. Nope, we're just outright just, terminating it. I guess there's no land in hand. Or at least you wouldn't... Uh, you would assume that you would discard one land as a little bit of a free roll, draw draw two cards, but... Yeah, absolutely. Maybe they really need both of those both of the spells. They might not have just... I guess you could see if you draw a land as well. kind of interested in the logic of maybe seeing if you could just draw a card. Hmm, so we're just passing here. I mean, if there's no land, I mean, I, yeah, you're Blood Braid Elf and go for it, I guess. Yeah, I think you just have to keep pushing this through till it eventually works. I mean, there's a Seismic Assault again. I think they're trying to set up for the uh, Bitimus Blast, because that will go get the Swan. Okay, what do we got here? Okay. Our glory. All right. That'll exile that. That's fine. Well, this kind of tells us that the opponent's hand here is some type of just removal spell or spell. Counter. Yeah. They're not it's actually not insane. Yeah. They're not actually lands. So you're not in that much danger. Or it's a swans they can't cast. Mm, very true as well. There, It is uh, important to note that the land the land situation is on the colors it's actually a little bit awkward yeah you need another white or a blue well right, you don't that, when you're trying to cast the scare of god though the, yeah but if you have the scare of god uh, you might be able to you might be able to take you home all right but let's see what happens here we can't forget flash also just has a lot of lands and you can kill the scare of god at any time that the problem is, you know, he just keeps coming back. So they might just try to go for it here. They say, I'm going to, they save the seismic assault. They slow rolled the, the I'm blast. Two minutes blast to try to get the, yeah. Yeah. The swans. Exactly. And then they win the game. Or there's some dance where they, I, I think the person has five lands to discard is probably, we, we know they have one card. So 
Yeah, even if it's a land, you just stack your triggers on top yeah, of it. Yeah, and I think that, that you could pretty much call that here. Like, a really great play from Flash. They just slow-rolled everything, and it turns out casting one spell on turn four actually did end up going all the way. Like, they kind of just jammed their big spells until their opponent ran out of stuff. Yeah, that's a tough one. Like I said, still looking at their hand, I would have probably cycled on those earlier turns. But, I mean, it still ended up not mattering, ultimately. Yeah. I, I like this version a lot, like Sam said, because it's just it's more all in, and it's like, okay, I've got... I'm just going to really abuse this, and I'm going to only play ways to find this. And it's been working out pretty well. This is also interesting, right? Because you can get all these cards, get all your lands. Discard however many you need to kill your opponent at this point. I guess eight lands, or seven lands now. Mm -hmm. And even if your opponent tried to respond to the last one, you still have more lands to stack more on top than they have. Yeah, you'll always have more lands. Yeah. You, you have tw almost uh, like 18 more lands. Yep, I think this is, just, this is just it at this point. Yeah, but you gotta make them do it, I guess. Yeah, because now even <laughs> if they try to respond, you've still yeah. got more lands in hand that don't really matter here. Well, you went down to one land in hand. Actually, I probably would have went a little deeper. Just to be matter. in case R yeah. was like slow rolling one land this entire time. Yep. <laughs> that that would have been very next level. All right. Well, that was that was interesting. This this all in swans is really proven to be pretty formidable. Yeah, that was that was a heck of a quarterfinals round. You know, we saw just a complete obliteration. You know mismatch all around you know and that was from, yeah every, that was from yeah. ari's deck that just snuck into the top eight you know so it can still happen you know matchups matter oh yeah absolutely and, and then there you had those two swans decks and it's just like we said it was just a game of chicken kind of sitting yeah. there who yeah, runs think, out of gas first and then gets the card they need you know i think it's proven that the all-in deck has just been very good at being all in <laughs> like People are not packing enough hate. Yeah, and it looks like the opponent also got a little bit unlucky in the sense that like, if at any point they had drawn extra lands, they'd have been able to use those to get rid of the creatures. Mm -hmm. But they actually had to use the hard removal you know, of the yeah. Terminate and the Hour of Glory. That those are the cards you need to get rid of the swans when everything's about to go down. you know. Exactly. All right, perfect. I'm excited to see the wear my pants. Uh, <laughs> it's in feature five. Let's check it out. All right. Uh, I'm excited for this deck because I Bogles is one of those things you either highly enjoy it as an archetype or you just hate it to death because you can't interact. Uh, I was always a I was always okay playing against Bogles, but I played decks that had like Liliana of the Veil, so that was kind of their bad. They're a bad matchup because <laughs> yeah, but I would say this though I don't even feel that this is truly a Bogles deck like your your creatures oh, yeah. are all relevant on their own and can get the job done exactly. plus when you're playing the the liege that pumps all your green and white creatures like you're gonna get a lot of damage in there oh I love Whitleaf liege yeah it's a great mm -hmm. card uh, yeah it's it's nice because they have some pants to put on but a lot of these creatures are just great and you know Quasali's always been pretty good at I, I mean, forming De Quasali Pride Mage in a format full of uh, full of bird combos is actually pretty strong. Mm -hmm. You're pre-boarded against what we, I consider was at least 30 to 40 percent of the meta. This this roulette. So as you're walking in here on a pretty interesting situation. You got a 17 to 15. We've got five attackers to three blockers, but not quite enough damage yet. It doesn't look like. Oh, they're gonna give it to him anyway. Yep. <laughs> all right well that was a quick one uh and then we're well we got a peek at that match. <laughs> i want to see some pants <laughs> yeah they weren't necessary in that one it was uh, i guess it was a nude beach they didn't need their pants <laughs> <laughs> all right let's check it out here well let's see what we have going into the semifinals here All right. Okay, so what can we got?
Yeah, pairings aren't showing for me yet. Okay, the semis quarters is still up. Did the semis get processed? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. It's overview quarters. All right, so we got Zach on Mono Red Elves. We have Fabian back on, I believe, some more swans. Mm -hmm. Yeah, swans. So that's the all in swan. Fabian's on all in swans. We got Arlax. Uh, coming up here with the Champion of Wit Sphinx of the Steel Wind uh, Control slash Reanimator. Uh, pretty strong. And then uh, it looks like we got uh, Alex Nelson with a little bit more. Oh, oh no, Isaac this... won that one with the. With the oh, did stack. it? Did yeah. it say? Oh, mm -hmm. it's showing. Oh, yeah, Isaac. Okay. Okay, there we go. Yeah, with some pants. It looks All cool. Right. And we're going to skip out of here for one more quick break, and then we'll get back with me and Caroline. are going to take care of y'all for the semis here. All right. See you soon.
Everybody gets one more helping of the, uh, we'll call it the dragon pasta combo while we deal with these semifinals here. Oh, I like it. Dragon <laughs> pasta sounds amazing. I would assume it involves some sort of dragon fruit. But you that, can make pasta oh, out of anything. Really, really spicy. Oh, wait, that I'm less interested in. But that's okay. <laughs> I'll, have, I'll have the spice on the side. Cool. How was the quarterfinals? It was very fast. Uh, we made our way around, saw three different matches, and they wow. all were done in, I wouldn't say record time, but uh, they, they really took care of business pretty quick. Well, I hope Ari walked his dog fast then, because <laughs> we are back. Um, so we're going to head down and check out the semis. And the semis is only showing me half a bracket. Oh, but... You guys see a full bracket, so that's exciting. Oh, I have a filter on. <laughs> okay, okay, we're good. Uh, so it looks like we ended up with Ari Lax on the Godfarer's Gift uh, deck against Fabian on like Turbo Swans, as I yep. always like to call it, uh, in one bracket. And then we have Isaac Sherman with <laughs> Where Are My Pants? I have to yell it because it's in capitals. Uh, against DC Sports, uh, who's playing the red-green uh, beatdown deck. So it's pretty cool. Uh, but you know what the travesty to this bracket is? Sometimes the magic gods don't let things work out well. And we end up getting both of the aggro decks in the same bracket. Mm, fair. Fair. Um, I think that might be the match we're going to watch. Yeah. So we are going to go down and watch Where Are My Pants. I really, I, I hope Isaac does have pants on, though I assume probably. <laughs> um, who knows um it's funny every time i read where are my pants i'm reading uh in the tone of like uh like uh what movie was it i think it was the incredibles where he's like where's my super suit that's like i'm reading yeah, exactly. woman where is my super suit yeah that's how i'm reading every time <laughs> um so it always gives me a good little chuckle okay so it looks like players are good we're good um as you said unfortunately the, the aggro match or aggro decks are facing each other um and well you know just taking a look at these deck lists how do you feel like w what side of the matchup would you like to be on uh in this one in particular i'm probably on the green red side just because creatures across the board are going to be a little bit larger you also have some life gain which is going to be a problem though it could work out if the red deck does draw their removal but yes. it's going to be a matter do you get multiple pieces of removal before this wealth leaf leash hits the table and you're staring at a bunch of four fours plus now that is a card. I do like a Wilt Leaf Liege. Um, we, we, you know, but I guess both players get that effect, right? The um, Zach Dubin has the Goblin one, mm -hmm. um, and Wilt Leaf is getting the Elf one here. Um, but I think, uh, I think Isaac's creatures being bigger will matter more um, because you know Zach is doing a lot of quick damage. Uh, but his his attacks are not huge. So once you know, once uh, Isaac's being able to get all these big creatures into play, it could be an issue. And as you said, a kitchen Finx comes into play, gains two life, negates basically everything that happened. Yeah. And we pass back over to Zach's turn. So even if you attack next turn, you just trade. The Sphinx comes back, gets another two life. Very likely, Zach's still going to end up this going into this next turn at nineteen or twenty life. Yeah, oh, I'm just well, checking out. Well, yeah, out. not even that now, because you only have one creature attacking. So, yeah, this is a pretty pretty safe turn going into uh, turn four here. Wow, this green-white deck is sweet. I was just looking at what Dauntless Escort does, which was in our hand, and I was confused. But it's a pretty cool card. Three mana, three, three. You can sack it to uh, give your creatures indestructible. Yep, for protect your team. It's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, we blocked with the Kitchen Fangs, gained more life, so... <laughs> Yay. And the turn you were worried about, uh, Wilt Leave Liege is here. Uh, plus, um, Zach is missing a land drop, to my knowledge. Now, so. if he does get a land, Javelin does deal with the Wilt Leave Liege. Yes. Uh, I guess it's only Javelin, right? His other burn spell is three damage. Yeah. And, oh no, I would not block here. Oh yeah, because now the three damage one plays, right? I don't know yeah. what it's called, but any, oh, it looks any... like we, we made it to our turn. Turn, so okay, I will say if we I make guess that, that to our turn, attack. 
<laughs> yeah, we're it's not looking great um, for for young Zach Dubin. Yeah, there's, um, there's really nothing else to be done here. So let's see. So I guess we want to. I do, unfortunately don't know what this split card is. Let me let me see what it is. Appeal authority. So the sorcery side one green until end of turn. Target creature gains trample and gets plus X plus X where a number of creatures you control. And then the aftermath side that can only be cast from the graveyard is. Tap up to two creatures. Your opponent controls creatures. You control with vi gain vigilance until end of turn. So pretty good card for a deck that's doing a lot of attacking with big yep. creatures, would you uh, say? May not even be necessary because we <laughs> yeah. now found those pants. <laughs> Wait, no, I thought there was no pants. Oh, <laughs> there's, there's there's pants. We just can't find them all the time. Yeah, there's there's one pair of pants. There's 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 yeah. one card, four copies, I think. Okay, okay, I understand now. Uh, so, yeah, this is a lot of damage. In fact, I believe close yeah, to lethal. I guess lethal. we're going to javelin the Welt Leaf Leash. Sure. Okay. Eh, a little less lethal. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a sorcery, so that wouldn't have worked. Okay. Um, so now we can play a three mana, three, three. Yep. Which we may have wanted to play. I guess it wouldn't have mattered. If we played it pre-combat, it was going to get javelin. Yeah, it's, it's so it didn't matter. Though. Yeah. Okay. Um Still looking mighty fine over here. We do have this this tr trample effect, the appeal, um, so that could could get us through. We even have enough mana to cast all of it. We can also cast the authority if we need yeah, to. Yeah, there there were no outs for the opposition there. Yeah. Okay. So we're uh, you know speaking of gotta go fast, uh, we are going fast and we're going into sideboarding uh, with uh, Isaac up a game against Zach Dubin. Um, it is the aggro matchup, so that makes sense. Yeah, and if you saw what he just highlighted there, uh, the old core sets, we used to have those circles of protection. And they were terrible magic cards, but they definitely got sideboarded in quite a lot. Is that what? There's a circle of protection? Illegal? Yep. That's a circle of protection red. Cop red. And it's super good in this matchup. Go for yeah, it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> so what is... So it, Pay one. Next time I read source of your choice would deal damage to you this turn, prevent that damage. My oh my. That is a card. So this is, uh, was those, was that from 8th edition or even earlier? 8th uh, edition. Oh. Wait, but isn't 8th edition in modern? Mm, I, you, I honestly don't remember where we cut off in modern anymore. <laughs> I was about to say yes and went maybe. Well, I'm not. I guess I know that cards from Eighth Edition are in Modern, but I don't know where the cutoff actually is. Because yeah. also a bunch of those things got like like there was Ninth Edition, et cetera. So um, I guess maybe Cop Red is not good. I I just didn't think it was legal in um, in Modern. Was the well, I'd say the difference is too in Modern. It also probably wouldn't be nearly as effective because mm -hmm. it'd be so much slower in tying up all your mana. And, right. You know, whereas that's not really the issue in this type of format. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's so see. We, the other thing too is the Chroma's Blessing got sideboarded in here, which is uh, it's a three mana instant. Choose a color. Creatures you control gain protection from the chosen color to turn, and it also has cycling just because. So why not? Yeah. So this is another thing's going to be a problem. Like if you end up in a standoff situation, you're just going to be able to cast a Chroma's Blessing. All your cards are going to get protection from red and effectively be unblockable. So if even if you get the board stalemated here, this is going to end up being pretty rough. Okie dokie. So I think we're going to just do some thinking, make sure we're all good. Zach's ready to sideboard. We're all good. We're heading back to game two. Um, this time, I assume Zach will be on the play. Uh, or we'll get to pick, which he did. Um, and yeah, you know, from our side, from Isaac's side, hand looks pretty reasonable. We have some two drops and some three drops, and now we have some removal. We have some pants. Yep, we found them. A, That's exciting. There, there's some, some pants for your opposing creatures, actually. They're loaning some clothes out with that pacifism. Oh, good point. Also, our mana was a little tricky. We do have two filtered lands and a, uh, white desert, but... Um, hopefully we don't have to take too much damage, though we did just draw another desert. Um, but this oh, we is also okay, though. Forest. I didn't even see the forest, so never mind. We must yeah, have played this, on turn one. Silly this is me. totally okay. 
you know, especially here having something with persist. So like you get to block twice if you need to. Yeah, this matchup seems really tough for the red green side, just looking as it's playing out. Yeah, the Ram Gang helps. Because you don't necessarily want to block there because you know you get the wither counters and you wouldn't come back from persist. That's a good one, yeah. The, maybe we'll actually see some wither. That'd be cool. Maybe. It's also possible they're going to get stuck with a pacifism here, but who knows? No, that's probably more likely. What's this other enchantment in our hand? Is that's that the, uh, you're talking about the green-white one? No, is that just that circle of protection? Yeah, the circle of protection is the one they just drew. I can see it. Okay. Yeah, the other's the shield of the oversoul. Right. Those are the pants. <laughs> yep. So we're just okay. going to play the circle here is the Looks plan, like I guess. It. Looks like it. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be tough to, to punch past here. Yeah, so now we get to negate at least three damage. Probably I'm, three. Uh, yeah, if Zach was lucky, maybe brought in the Gleeful Sabotage. You have a way just to get rid of enchantments. Since you knew there was at least a couple in this matchup that could matter. Yeah, I wonder about that. That's a pretty good question. Oh, man. Earthshaker Kenra. What a card. And it's open decklist, too. So, like, you know, he knew the card existed. So if he was Well, and there's also... There's already pants in the main deck, and there's passivism in sure. the sideboard. Mm -hmm. I think in the sideboard, or maybe even... Yeah, in the, in the sideboard. So I, I think it's, like, on his radar. I'm not sure. We'll just have to play it out and see. Uh, but he is doing his, you know, he's doing his thing. He cast Bloodbraid Elf, made a creature, attacked for a bunch. He's doing what his deck intends to do. Um, so it's not over for him yet. No, and I did find it interesting that we attacked with the Elite there last turn. Because this is where we talk about, like, you know, acknowledging when you are and aren't the beatdown, right? Like, in this case, you knew the opponent's coming with more creatures, bigger creatures than what you're going to have on the board at that point. Saving to block, especially with the creature that can come back and block again, would have been much better than that two damage you got in last turn. Like that two damage. Well, doesn't Earthshaker Kenra not allow the block? Uh, true, or, but we didn't. But that wasn't on the table when you attacked. Right. Well, no, I know, but it technically yeah. it worked. Like maybe that was on on their mind. There's like, well, I that's just fair. Earthshaker here. I don't know. I don't know. But I get like we wouldn't be able to block, so it kind of worked out. <laughs> We got two damage in. But now now we're staying home. We're well, yeah, home. you also got an extra two life off of the Finx now. You can prevent one of the attackers with the circle. Probably so, the wither again. Yeah. Oh, All right. Oh Here you go. This this will help. Okay. What's this trigger that the initiate's doing? Uh, that the initiate is doing... It's like when a player casts a red spell, you may pay one if you do, and I didn't see the rest. Oh, wait. Take a look. Yeah, I can go and grab two, actually. Um, so it says, if you do target creature, can't block this turn. Okay. Okay, there we go. So the Kitchen Finks can't block. We get the shock. Hmm, where do we put the shock? I mean... Maybe you just send it at the opponent. Yeah, I was wondering that. That's what, yeah, Zach decided too. It's right on mana for the initiative. So we get to do one block. We get to stop. So we block the elf, we stop the wither, and then we take one, one three, six. We go to four. Yeah. Okay. So these blood braids bought some time. Well, these initiates have actually been really good, right? Yeah. Because. Not letting the Kitchen Finks block here um, has meant that we can't get more life gain off it and trade with one of our Blood Braids. It's pretty cool. For sure. So soon we're going to trade with a Blood Braid that seems like the most obvious block there. Um, we'll take three damage away from something. Leaving. Oh, yeah, leaving us to four. I was right. So if he just has... Oh, no, no. He can't have the Burn Spell in his hand because we just have Circle of Protection. Exactly. 
Okay, so we're not, not it looks it's looking okay, but it's not um it's not perfect yet. Yeah, this is where the circle gets a little silly because it's just you end up having to start just leaving a bunch of mana open just on the off chance you actually get to prevent all this damage. Right, but we do have to play yeah, I don't know. We hmm. So I guess we have to develop our board a little bit. Looks like we're going for I'm gonna play a two two. Oh no, we're not. We got tricked. So it looks like instead we're actually planning to leave one mana up mm -hmm. to to stop either like a creature or a big burn spell. And not not just keep four up and, and stop all the Yeah, because with their mana situation realistically, maybe there's two creatures and they can make two things not block, but you still wouldn't be dead at that point. So question. Mm -hmm. Where were you oh no, I guess we don't want to cycle anyway. I was good because we don't have any colored mana up. But Correct. maybe that's fine. Oh, what happened? Did we cast something? What did we cast? Uh, looks like an initiate. Oh, Some there it is. An initiate. I couldn't find it on the stack. Yeah. Okay, I was like, where'd it go? Uh, so then we, so Kitchen Finks can't block. If we got another red spell, let's see. How much damage is this? So now what do you do? So if you cop red this. Oh, this is, I think yeah. DC Sports has pulled it together. Yeah, yep, wow. Because he got another initiate. Those initiates are so powerful in this creature matchup. Mm -hmm. I didn't really think about that at all. That's so cool. Okay. Okay, back in it. Game three. Here we go. Yep, well done. That was cool. Looks like that we're not interested in the blessing anymore. Kind of got stuck in our hand. It might not be the powerful thing that we want it to be. Um, Cop Red was cool, but we kind of just can't leave all that mana up forever. We're a creature deck. We got to be doing... Some creature stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, that's the downside to that card. It does yeah. eat a lot of mana. Interesting. Okay, well, that was cool. Um, I will say, the thing about Circle of Protection is they're better in decks where you have some reasonable amount of actual removal or some two-for-ones or some sweepers. So eventually you reset to a situation where maybe you're only dedicating like two mana a turn to keep their creatures at bay, and you can still do what you want to do. And this type of situation, you're still in this weird spot because you need to cast your creatures too because that's kind of your road to victory but you know like we saw in that last game when are you casting something and when are you not right are we just going to leave that five mana open on that last turn to just try to stop everything like not really right we're not you're not accomplishing anything there for sure yeah interesting okay so this hand's a one lander assuming we're not keeping that one uh this one's a two lander or sorry three lander with um birds so it's probably a sneak uh, yeah. Not not anything big. We don't have any uh, beefy friends, but we got we got some stuff to do, um, so it's going to be fine. I'm I'm tempted to put a land back, but it's probably wrong. <laughs> yeah, I would definitely put a land back here. Okay, nice. I like it. Um, just keep all of our two twos mm -hmm. and just start going. Okay, I'm excited. Well, it's also possible that you have a couple of other one mana things, so you could potentially draw one and then be set up to do something real big on the next turn, depending. Okay. Um, I assume it, uh, the Pride Mage has no real targets in the deck, but it's just kind of just in the deck, just because. Like, there's no enchantments or artifacts in DC's deck, right? Correct. It's just a 2-2, but it does have Exalted. So if you're in a weird right. situation where you just need to attack with just one thing, you know, maybe you have a 3-3 three, three, or a 4-4 four, four that's just the biggest thing on the table, so you just attack with just that. Mm -hmm. Or to well, even make a 2-2 two, two trade with something is pretty right. nice, too. You also have this bird, so if you're really stuck and there's, you want to have a, a, a air strike, you can always attack for one. Yeah, that's the only thing I would say here is I probably would have tried to cast the Pride Mage just because if something happens to this bird here... Oh, good point. Like right yeah. now. Whoa, yeah. good call. <laughs> Especially when your opponent sees that you missed a land drop. Like, I would have done yeah. the same thing. Oh, no. And we drew oh, a I guess they didn't card. see This is turn two. Never mind. Yeah, they... We don't know we used to land drop, but we are about to. Um, but we did draw a really great card. So in a couple turns, we might be okay. Um, but the one thing is we are currently the beat down, mostly because we're on the play. Yeah. Um, so 
And that could not, bo- that might not bode well for DC Sack Sports. Oh my gosh, Sack Demon. Because uh, we found really what got him ahead last game was was punching through all that damage with Bloodbraid Elves. And that might not be as easy now that there's these elves on the, on the board. But let's see how it goes. Yeah, the logic there is I think you have to assume your bird's going to die anyway. Because the ability for you to cast even Wiltly Fleege on this turn had you drawn a land, like, it's from, from the opposing side. If right. Fleege is in your hand, you draw a land. Like, that's really hard for them to deal with if they don't have exactly Javelin in hand. Okay. We're and that's changing the difference cows. Too, because you're talking about, you could have had a third creature here already. Mm. And it's now we're just done. Matter, yeah. yeah. Okay, Bloodbraid Elf time. So I have a question. If, if Bloodbraid Elf was to come down, which it, it is... Was that not a reason to leave back these two twos? Uh, at least one of them. Yeah, because because that you know it, it trades really nicely with them, um, and and you, we know you don't want to attack the the haste. Now maybe the same thing. Maybe the Earthseeker Kinder is on the mind uh, again. I'm not sure, but that's something to think about. Yeah, but I think you. It's a lot of damage. We know we're stuck on lands, Ooh, so that okay. kind of limits you there. But we did some find life. one. We got some we life. One. We don't we didn't find the pacifism. I think that would be the better option here. But the uh, Oasis will get us two more life. Now we're trying to decide: do we do we hold back? But I don't think we can now. Like we should attack for four and gain two, right? Uh, let's see. You'd possibly be taking not really because well, you do have a kitchen sphinx, so I would put you at thirteen. You so would he, take let's, yeah, let's six, say go to seven or worse if you end up not being able to block. So, like, I'm leaving at least one back. Okay. Because putting the opponent to 12 here, you play the Kitchen Finks. If you do find another land and play the Wiltleaf Leaves next turn, that's a huge attack on the next turn. Right. That was sort of my temptation for that. That's kind of why I wanted to bash in for four, um, was so that I have these, you know, potentially three four fours on the following turn, putting us at eight so two of them would be lethal. That was sort of my plan, um, because I don't think we could get burned out even if this Kitchen Finks can't block. Um, because in order for not to be blocked, there'd have to be a spell to be played. So that was kind of my, sure. my quick math, but um, I'm happy with how this is working out. Let's see how Zach Dubin handles the situation. Um, feels like the Initiate was a key part of his pushing damage through plan, and so we'll have to yeah. see how this goes. But again, we're, we're talking about... like. Not taking that turn two to play the Pride Mage is a huge difference in this match right now. Yeah, because it would have attacked at least twice, so yep. that would have been an eight. That's a big difference. Well, not and just all that, these even would... that last attack would have been an exalted attack, potentially. Oh, right. If we didn't, yeah, if we wanted to leave the Pride Mage back. Mm-hmm. Um, plus, if we draw the land, that would be four, four, fours instead of Correct. three. Okay, well, it's good to know. Um, you know, magic's hard. I don't know if you know. Oh, it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've heard a little bit. It's it's hard. I play perfectly, of course, but uh, I won't even pretend to play perfectly. I have too much video evidence on my YouTube channel. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, I've got there's some clips. I, I my story was gonna fall flat pretty soon. <laughs> um, but hey, we're all here mostly because we enjoy playing it not perfectly. Um, and so I imagine what DC, what Zach Tubin here is doing is just you know looking at his hand, figuring out like what this seems like a big turn, right? Oh, absolutely. Um, we're close to four mana. We know Willie Fleege is a big thing, a big threat. We have all these persist creatures. How do we handle this scenario? So, you know, we're just taking some time figuring it out. I like it. And there's five damage in, or five cards in hand, now four. So it's like maybe you attack with just the Ram Gang and see what the opponent wants to do. Yeah, I assume if there's nothing fancy, like if, the, if we're not going to be able to stop the Kitchen Pinks from blocking, I don't think we can attack with the Bloodbraid Elf. Yeah. I think we need to just do the Wither, Ram Gang, Ram Gang, and get uh get some some three threes rolling. That no, Wither no, no. effect. Maybe it's another Ram Gang and a possible removal card or something. I don't know. There's a lot of things these four cards could be. Yeah, that feels like decisions would have been made faster, but it's unclear. Um, I'm picturing like we're like burn spells. I'm picturing like seven damage of burn spells. Mm-hmm. Um, and we're trying to figure out, like, do we go for it now? That's that's what I'm picturing. Maybe an Earthquake or sh- Earth Shaker Kenra. The thing in. is, though, if it is a Flame Javelin, then I probably am attacking and carrying less. Ooh, yeah, I wasn't exactly. about Earth Shaker. Okay. Oh, oh. Because the scariest thing you're going to see Wait. is a Wildleaf Leech, but you can kill that. 
So what what's your reasoning here? Did you see what happened? We yeah. played Earth Shaker and we selected not kitchen figs. So what's our logic there? Do I is I am I missing a trick? Maybe just see if you can get the kitchen things to block and then just kill it. I mean, they're still going to get the life off of it, but maybe, maybe you want the bigger figure, creature like, off just... the table. Uh, okay, okay. Because it's possible it's... the removal card is just another volcanic hammer and not an actual javelin. Right. Okay. Okay. And here, if they block, I mean, you're incentivizing them to block the kitchen finks or block a non ram gang creature with the kitchen finks. But huh. it looks like we're not even sure what we want to attack with here. Yeah, I feel like we came out of the tank, then forgot our pen and went back in. <laughs> here right. we go. Okay. I, I want to attack with the Earthshaker Kenra that's in the graveyard. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what I was just thinking. If I'm going to attack with one, it's probably going to be the Kenra just to give us a chance to get it bigger. Guess if, we're on the block. If it comes down to that. <laughs> oh, this is a, a one mana one one and can pump something. Well, I don't think the pumping thing is going to matter soon. Nope. It's just a body at this it's point. It's just a body. Uh, no land there has made... Um, not great for Isaac. You know, we, we still have a ton of creatures. We, you know, we can make some choices here. But uh, that Wilt Leaf Liege would have potentially ended the game. That being said, Zach does have three mana up. We know what three mana means for damage. So who knows? We'll have to wait and see. Um... Yeah, but I really it, but it like is twelve that. to twelve, and your opponent effectively really... has infinite blockers. While where we're at, oh, he's back! It's the dragon. He's back. Okay, okay. So, hmm. So I guess Zach was working through the concept. Was I'm going to have to have this kitchen things die at some point? I want it to happen now under my own terms. Then I have my dragon, and I have a two turn. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So unfortunately, we still actually only have a two-turn clock because we well, wouldn't be maybe. able to. If it's a flame javelin in hand, that could be it. Oh right, because th that would be three mana, which equals equate to four damage. Mm -hmm. So it'd be one extra. Okay, okay. Well, well unfortunately, we the kitchen thinks so does mess up that plan. But this dragon is looking pretty good on this turn. Like, like Isaac can't push through at the moment. Any land off the top, and this goes. Terribly wrong, unless exactly Flame Javelin is hiding out. Um, I have a feel. I don't know if it is because we did just tap out that turn, so it's hard to tell. I would attack with just the dragon anyway here. Yes. Maybe pump two or three times, and just see what happens next turn. If you pump. have the Flame Javelin in hand. Yeah, pump with with it, nothing that costs life. Okay. Again, I don't know what's happening. What what's? Uh oh. What? Why the oh hold on one second oh my gosh we're so silly mm. Earthshaker Kenra has a text yep <laughs> it can't target kitchen face <laughs> right because it's it's equal to its power yeah so that's why it didn't target the kitchen things I'm so silly I apologize for everything <laughs> all right so um, the good news is here you've got a big flyer you don't even care if they actually draw the wilt leaf leash I mean the worst thing for them now is to get a white land so they can actually cast pacifism. Right, which he didn't. So this is, to my knowledge, she cheese. Yep. Uh, White land would also activate the witch, but um, okay. So what is this? Gives plus one plus one is indestructible, and then some stuff. Flying indes. Oh, flying indestructible. Hold mm -hmm. on. Well, that doesn't. That's bad. So this Earth Jake Kenner not being dead, by the way, has really mattered. Yep. Ah, you were right. Good call. Yep, there's this the sabotage. Is, this is game three, so it, yep. it likely came back in, but... um, Okay. Yep, that's it. I think that's probably it. I don't, I don't know what BC Sports is up to. Uh, some pre-combat pumps, I like it. Also, the over-pumping. That's a little bit of a, <laughs> uh, a signature for Zach at this point, but okay. <laughs> Well, the uh, dragon's got fire-breathing business to do. <laughs> that's actually pretty crazy. That all, like, that all shook out that way, right? Um, that we did get a, a way to deal with the Shivan dragon, and then, boom, we had the answer in our hand the whole time. That, that was 
that was fun. That was some good magic that we I saw. I think it's there. awesome. We got to see particularly a Sibin, Shivan Dragon pumped win two games today, two matches today. Yes. And all this based on the concept that, you know, the player only played it due to, like, um, you know, remembering the old times. Like, I think DC or Zach said something about uh, it was the first card that he played. And so he just wanted to to play it in a tournament again. So I think that's so cool. It's so awesome um, when you have a fun of and it works out twice. <laughs> Yes, uh, that's true. It is just a one of right? And it's yeah. two games for us. Wow, who knew? Six mana, five, five dragon, still good enough. Uh, so I think we are going to head up to our finals. And by that, I mean take a break and then go to our finals. Um, so we'll... Just kidding. We're going to check on see. I got tricked on coverage, but that's okay. We're going to see how people finished, and then we'll take a break. Uh, so we know that we just watched uh, Zach Dubin beat Isaac. Uh, Sherman with red green stuff versus green white stuff. I uh, have to admit, I didn't think that's how the match was going to shake out. Um, some mana issues on Isaac's side did probably contribute to some of it, um, but there were some pretty tight plays had by both sides as well. Um, we have a result from the other side. We have Arilax falling to Fabian. Uh, so that was the Turbo Swans deck taking out the God Pharaoh's gift deck. Um, so that means the finals will be Fabian versus Zach. Uh, yeah, I expect that's going to be pretty fast, too. Yeah, sounds like that's a theme of our day. Um, so why don't we... Do we... Do we? Yeah, we'll take a quick break. I don't think it'll be very long. long. Um, we'll just let everyone make sure that Zach and Fabian are ready to go in their features. Uh, Daquan, I think you're heading out. Is this it? Yeah, this is it. So I hope everybody didn't get bored to death with me running my mouth this afternoon. So. Yeah. <laughs> Never. And I, I was just joking. It's not the end of our friendship. It's just the beginning. Um, but we will see you next time. We really appreciate you helping out, helping out and hanging out and giving us all your knowledge. It was very fun. Uh, oh, it was then, lots of fun. Awesome. Carla, or actually, while we're here, uh, really, really quickly, sorry, where can people find you that isn't right now since you're oh my gosh they can find me on twitter and youtube under power dragon p-o-w-r-d-r-a-g-n i have stuff up almost every day and i have a podcast called the color of magic that you can find just about everywhere nice awesome uh we'll, we'll be sure to check that out uh so i'll be back with carlin for the finals um and we'll see everybody in a few minutes Bye bye
seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this you crazy mother. Hello and welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, Carlin. Are well, you excited for the finals? Here. Yeah. Let's absolutely. go. Um, I'm excited. This is actually the second finals where I've gotten where I've, we get to watch uh, a friend of mine. So I'm excited. Uh, of course, no bias though. Just well, a little. You can have a little. Yeah, just a little. <laughs> a little bias is a treat. Um, yeah. So yeah uh, just to catch you up, we did watch we watched one semis because they were both so fast. So we actually only got to watch Isaac versus Zach, um, both in sort of an aggro mirror between a green white deck and a red white deck. Uh, Zach did pull out the match uh, in three um, with his red, uh, sorry, red green deck. I should say uh, it was interesting. We you know we kind of anal uh, analyzed that the green white deck was. Bigger and stronger, um, but DC yeah. and uh, Zach Duman was he was just faster, so uh, he ended up taking it down in three. And so we're gonna watch him versus Fabian. And if you remember Fabian, that was the kind of turbo swan list. That was a forty-two lands, yeah. not many permanents. Get a swan, get a um, assault. Let's go. <laughs> um, so I think uh, I think it is possible. We're going to be done pretty soon, Carlin. <laughs> Just because yeah. this feels a like a little fast. Um, let's look <laughs> <Might> at... <be. laughs> Just a little. Also, let's look at this turbo list. It's been a while since we saw. We saw Zach's list just last round. So let's take a look uh, into that one. And what's, you know, where's your head at for this matchup? What do, what do you think is likely between both uh, an aggressive really, deck and a turbo deck? I really... Well, I think post-board... Uh, having three Kitchen Finks and two Wrath of God is going to be pretty good uh, for the uh, for Fabian stack. For Fabian, yeah, and he has even has a another blast in the side which can cascade into a Wrath, so you can bring in more. He kind of made his sideboard in such a way that it's uh, pretty easy to tutor stuff, and he also has an Hour of Devastation as well. I uh, do like Hour of Devastation. That's pretty cool. Um, the one thing I've noticed about DC's deck is he doesn't need that many creatures on board um, <laughs> to make things happen. And a lot of his creatures have haste, uh, which is a little bit of a Wrath's enemy. Um, exactly. Haste so, is the menace of control. Yeah. And we have a decent raid. We've got the Bogart, we've got the Bloodbraid, and the Earthshaker Canner all have haste. Uh, plus the Cohort. And yeah, that's it, actually. That has haste. But um, I think it's going to be a interesting matchup because also we need to figure out like how much of the swans or oh, the swan also affects what's happening too but how much of the combo is gonna happen in this matchup like that's what i'm curious about. yeah exactly okay so we're gonna actually watch from the turbo swans list uh sorry from the turbo swans side um which is exciting it's actually the first time i've gotten to see this side of things um the thing i'm most excited for are those cascade spells uh mm -hmm. we haven't you, you you've talked to me about how great they are we saw it exactly once uh i think in round five um, yeah but i'm pretty excited to see 
see them come into effect. Is this a hand that you think you can battle red green stuff with? Uh, I think you're no, I don't know if really what you're looking for that's better than uh, deal for damage to a creature on cascade that finds you part of your combo. Right. And that's, a cycling land as well. So I don't really right. think you can. I mean, you have 42 lands, so <laughs> you're going to have to take a couple risks on the land heavy hand. Uh, I don't know if you really have an option. <laughs> yeah, that's a very valid point. Um, we do have some cyclers, but we don't have a great way to make red that isn't mm. gemstone mine. Uh, so we're in a bit of a pickle for sure. Yeah, we like saw I, Fabian. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, like, I assume we'll have to play one of these tapped red sources. Yeah, definitely. Well, we saw Fabian win a game where he just cast started casting Cascade Spells on four, and that was it. He didn't do anything for the first three turns of the game. Okay. And, uh, but that was going some more combo, so if this is an aggressive enough start, I mean, you're really just looking for another Cascade Spell because it can be considered the <laughs> Seismic Assault is quite strong against an aggro deck of two toughness creatures. Or yeah, a, a good, good portion point. of the early aggression. Um, so what we did, you know, we do start off with a one mana one one. Um, in our last match, this initiate actually came up um, and was kind of a big clutch creature because uh, we were playing against a creature matchup, so there was a lot of you know reason to stop blocking. Unfortunately, I don't think that's going to be very important in this matchup. But playing on curve is totally reasonable, so that's where we're going. Uh, it looks like we did not decide to play attack redland from. Uh, Fabian side, we just went with the City of Brass. Um, but here we come, attacking for three, I assume, with maybe a cycle, I'm not sure. Um, but D yeah, DC Sports is going to come on in, attack, uh, I assume, after all these triggers shake out, uh, they'll be attacking for three with maybe paying one to cycle. What, what do you think? Oh, okay. Mm, probably, I mean, you're not, if you're not gonna cycle i don't think there's any reason to play brass first okay just... i'm i'm not confused right i think we just clicked through our attack step is that what happened uh yes okay <laughs> that's fine i like there wasn't a card that was on our mind that was just an unfortunate accident okay no that was in fact <laughs> the old click through combat which never happens in paper but does <laughs> does happen uh on a, online a little much yeah, that's reasonable. It's, it's something I'm quite fearful with Moto, but here we are. We'll keep going, um, and we'll attack this time, I assume. Well, I mean, if your opponent takes a time walk, then I guess you have to take it, because, you know, it's going to happen to you at some point as well. Exactly. Okay. Um, so, I guess this time we don't have to pay... Oh, we do still have to pay damage. Okay. Two mana cycler, yeah. Yeah, um, I think we should. We kind of priced ourselves into doing this, right? We didn't play either of those tap lands on turn one. Yep. Uh, so I guess the, to the life we go. Uh, can we do anything interesting? Not really. <laughs> no, How you many can play counters Lotus. do you want? To... Oh, okay. So we oh. could cycle? Yeah, because your Brass City of Brass is not doing you any favors. Okay, okay. So we'll cycle here, they play might the wait, Lotus. Though. Well, now Lotus has to have two untapped, so they they price themselves into not doing it this turn. Oh, it's two untapped. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lotus. That card is bad. Lotus, uh, the other, the new one got printed. It can be any lands, but well, Lotus and has it has untapped. X proof. The new one has X proof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, just laughing that this card is. So it looks like we're getting shocked. End of turn. Um, untapping. Hopefully, playing a Blood Raid Elf is place that you'd want to be if you were DC Sports, I imagine. Huh, okay. So no, none, none of that. Playing a 1-mana one 1-1 one one with triggers that doesn't matter. And missing our land drop, which is not great. Uh, now we get to play the Swans, which is a very annoying card. So I will stop participating in all commentating now <laughs> <laughs> well i don't know i think they're more I, they'll probably just run it out there to run it out there and if something happens you have a blast well how you... can i don't think zach can kill it right uh i will double check his list here he can make it not 
block. There is, with, like, there is four flame javelin. Oh, no, you're right. It's all direct damage. <laughs> right, but the instigator is going to matter now. Sorry. I, I was, before I was saying the instigator, or um, is that what it's called? The initiate, sorry. The in initiate yeah. is going to matter because now any red spell is pay one camp block. Um, so that means yeah. the damage train gets to keep going. That being said, you know, not to harp too much. Ooh, it, it is well, there's, sometimes you just draw it off the top and you win the game. So, um, But DC, or their opponent <laughs> is now at three life and he did miss three damage. So this is an unfortunate situation. Uh, it's likely uh, yeah, that's actually good to note that... Um, the game would have been over. Yeah, unfortunate for reals. But we are going to see this likely combination of things happen. Um, and then heading to... There, there's not really a way to whiff, right? In a deck where you have 42 lands no. in your deck? It, okay. It's over. Okay. That is... It's so is not over. There's, it's they, there's seven lands in their hand. So you really only need one and to just not whiff once to start the chain. So it's... Basically, you just click through. But I mean, hey... Uh, Zach misclicked, so maybe Fabian will. Yeah, <laughs> so no, make him do it. That is what's happening, right? There is no, a con there's not a concession heading. Yeah, uh, from Zach's side. That's, that's fine. Let's see um, where we're going. How much lands? So it, twenty damage is ten lands. Uh, so Moto doesn't exactly make it easy. We can to just talk them. about the sideboard at this point. Yeah, that's um, true. from. <laughs> So from Zach's side, I think we're definitely going to see, uh, I think, Everlasting Torment, right? Damage can't be prevented. That's that's pretty good against swans. And it's an enchantment as well, so it's harder to interact with. Uh, I'm probably, uh, probably going to see maybe... No, it's tough. I think definitely the Gleeful Sabotage. So it's like two Gleeful, one Everlasting Torment, and I don't know if that's maybe maybe Blood Moon, but I don't think it... You know, Blood Moon's actually probably a nice call. Yeah, I think Blood Moon... So, you know, red is part of the combo, so it's like, oh, don't worry about Blood Moon, but there's actually a lot of mana-producing lands in Fabian's deck that would really struggle against blood moon lotus being you know the main one and yeah and there's only <laughs> there's only seven actual basics in his 42 lands uh, yeah I'm, so that I'm could be a little bit of a problem yeah. okay so i think we're gonna mix things up a little bit uh carlin uh we're gonna go to sideboarding uh maybe we'll stick around for a little bit make you know see what sideboarding options there are just kidding we're not okay my plan has been revealed we're actually gonna pop over and watch game two from zach dubin's side all to right keep everybody on their toes. so we're gonna head over there and do that um but Let's then see what we get to watch in. zach's sideboard yeah uh so you're right blood moon came in uh so that's pretty cool looks like our one mana two one came out um our shivan is not coming in <laughs> sad to you that that should have been in the main deck. I've decided it was yeah, too great and too games. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> it won too many games. Leaving in all the direct damage, which is a great great way to just close it out if you get Wrath of God, which uh... well, and that's sort of what I was saying. Like like DC Zach's deck doesn't really need you to have a bunch of creatures on board. Like that direct damage can help uh, help close that window for sure. Uh, so we're just waiting for Fabian to sideboard. Like oh, yeah. And I think an early point. Blood Moon might actually be pretty detrimental. I feel like we might be zoomed in in a way that might not be beneficial. It does look a little zoomed in. <laughs> um, let me just ask. You're good? Okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing nothing. Don't mind me. I'm not typing. <laughs> Um, so, you know, did you get a chance to look at the card pool before you started, before you kind of joined us this morning? Did you have an idea of what you thought you would see today? Uh, well, Swans definitely stuck out a lot because that's just like a known combo, I guess. It's one of those things. Um, but it definitely, I assumed it was going to be something to do with like Blood Braid Elf just because people love that card and it's great value and. You know, it goes into important three drops. So I had 
I had somewhat of an idea, but I couldn't. You couldn't really. It, it felt like it was really up in the air overall. Like there's a few things that stuck out, but it didn't. I didn't think there's going to be one dominant uh, archetype. And I think that's pretty. Uh, that's pretty on track of what happened, right? Like, you know, it wasn't. There was not an obvious zombie stack. There was not an obvious like mana drain deck. Uh, there yeah. was just there was a lot of different options, and you know we've come to a cool finals. We have a red green you know play some awesome stuff deck with a cool combo deck um so we did mulligan the first hand for zach uh kept the second one our second six um we are now attacking with our initiate we don't have a turn to play but we do have a zoomed in match again (laughs) wooded foothill fetch a forest uh and then you have blood moon and gleeful sabotage you have a lot of time to buy uh, I mean, one the one issue is though, you know what? Actually, I think if this blood moon just sticks, uh, <laughs> uh, Fabian is in a oh, lot wait. of trouble. Yes. Yeah, so even if Fabian played exactly a basic, what? Like, does basic island work? But no, I I can't think of a basic that would get get us out of this right do do you think that they brought in enchantment removal it seems so unlikely. Uh, it's open deckless so i would like to think so but they're only the problem with their enchantment removal is it's maelstrom pulse right which is a well, green black spell which they yeah. really can't cast unless they, they have not they can oh. go uh so if they go basic so they can go metamorphose metamorphose is still always a draw Right? Yes. Well, okay. no. His list does not oh, have he metamorphos. Oh, have metamorphos. Right. So that actually, the this, list. this Blood Moon could just be a GG, to be honest. There's not really looking his list. Well, Seismic Assault, right? Well, like the, they- yeah, okay. Seismic Assault does exist, but I think the, the real issue is what's he going to do beyond that? Because you can't play any of your other spells. So right, your like, opponent has forever to do... There's technically a world <laughs> where you get a seismic assault, your hand is a bunch of lands, you deal with the creatures, and just over time, a lot of time, you do two damage. That's not likely to happen, but that's okay. No, I, th- I think they'll get burned out before that. Yeah, this is looking super good for Zach, actually. Yeah, good like, call. Very on good. <laughs> for sure. Um, so we'll see how that goes. We also, like, the cool thing is we just have, like, a ton of gas. <laughs> like, we're going to close the game fast. That's that's the thing we don't have oh, to yeah. worry about right now is we have these Bogart Rams, uh, two of them. We have the Sabotage for this mm. Seismic Assault, um, which I assume we'll just do next turn, uh, take a turn off, get rid of that. Uh, I, I'm, I'm feeling confident. Maybe a second Seismic Assault. Um, might be a little annoying, but yeah, eventually run out of stuff. So, well, having the cyborg card for the seismic is great, so you don't have to run anything else out before yeah. it gets damaged. Uh, and then the thing is, if it's not seismic, they're just gonna have trouble removing the board. But we also have to consider, uh, Zach left in quite a bit of just straight burn to the dome. So there's a world where you just can't really do anything, and you could kill creatures, but you can just eventually die to enough flame javelins, shocks, or exactly like volcanic hammers. Well, and these bogarts are three three, so you would need two two lands. Yeah, like, exactly. And, out of resources. and oh. you have hasters. Okay, okay, here we go. This this could be a game now. We have two three yeah. power creatures. The basic the withers- forest was great here because there's yeah. only four of those in the deck. So <laughs> that was actually an amazing draw because the mathematical equation of trying to get one of your four forests that can actually cast one of your spells is pretty crazy. Well, and the the going into another creature is also pretty great. Yes, and hitting the, the kitchen sink was great. <laughs> so luckily the Wither does take care of of the kitchen sink problem, which is a great way to call it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, that's, a, that's a crazy, that's an interesting interaction from that block is the whole creatures with undying, creatures that deal damage with wither. <laughs> oh, yeah, not, it's very you don't really confusing. see that anymore. 
<laughs> no. And that's that's one of the cool things about this tournament, right? Is we just delve into parts of the magic world that we don't spend a lot of time in. Uh, we see Bloodbird Elf, we see Kitchen Vinks, we see Blood Moon, but we don't see Bogart Ram <laughs> ever. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty cool. Oh, okay. This is starting to get a little concerning. We that are, was the one F struggle survive. Yeah, our, got struggled. Our Bogart is struggling to do anything. Um, so now we're back in the spot. We're playing another one. Hopefully this one's good. We take damage from Bloodbraid Elf, but then we have the Volcanic Hammer to clean that up. So I yeah, think we're doing okay. I think this is still very winnable from Zach's side. But it's it got a little hairy, you have to admit. It's a little bit worse than we thought when we slammed the blood braid or the oh absolutely thing. yeah but you know you're turning off part of your opponent's deck but oh, they did top, they got two natural seismic Ooh. assaults okay. into this a blood is, braid we're caught we're oh gosh yeah this is rough this is rough oh it is no very rough this is not and where I'd want I guess to the fall. the best thing you could do here is draw your own land and play your blood braid and try to get some blood, some like power a land of on the board volcanic hammer and the cohort i guess the cohort's kind of bad they might just be don't, okay well that was it wow that was the match holy cow they, that was a quick one well we did call that if we called anything it was that it was going to be fast yeah um, i'm surprised that blood moon just might have said blood moon was gg and it wasn't I, I guess it i guess <laughs> if you natural your mountain or i guess if you if you natural your one of like you have four forests in your deck, and you natural it. And well, and the two, the two seismic assaults too. And, that, and we two had natural a natural seismic. Oh. Yeah. And that was I, an unfortunate. I think that. Uh, of I, think you might, I, I think if the. But. Yeah, I mean, definitely. Sometimes that's magic, right? You just sometimes you draw, you line it up perfectly, or just it's top. A, it's important that we know we have a winner of our tournament. Yes. Baby and has taken it all down with what was deemed to be. Um, I believe the uh, best deck, strong deck, strong. Oh gosh, strongest, strongest deck, yeah, strongest, strongest deck. deck. Um, yeah, so best choice brought to you by Sam Black um, also happened to be our winner. So it was a very good uh, combination of events. Both had the best deck and took down the whole tournament. Um, we got to see this deck a couple times throughout the weekend, or sorry, throughout the day. Um, really enjoyed the concept of, hey, here's swans, here's seismic assault. Um, What do I do with it? You know, some people went controlling, some people went, you know, bonus part of my deck. And then Fabian's like, oh no, 42 lands. Yeah, exactly. Um, We saw some crazy hands. Like last, like game one of this match, we saw six lands, a five mana cascade spell, like keep. (laughs) And And then there we go. So um pretty cool awesome tournament i enjoyed hanging out with you carlin um should we yes. tell i guess we should probably tell fabian what they won um so the prizes for this tournament yeah. include first place uh it's 200 store, uh, store credit to the mythicstore.com great place to get some cool swag like this one also magic cards you know that stuff too um and then second place so uh, zach picking up a hundred dollar store credit uh third and fourth fifty dollars a piece and fifth through eight twenty five dollars a piece plus all that cool bonus deck building stuff with uh ten dollars each for best choice most powerful deck oh, yeah. that is best choice and sweetest brew yeah plus um, the new mythic society merch as well you can use that credit on oh yeah Look at that tank part. tops coming soon. Tank tops coming soon. <laughs> Is this a rumor just, that you're just starting like on the, the internet? Boss. I feel like you're starting this on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait. Level with me. Did you or did you not message Pascal and say... We yes, I directly tops. messaged him and yes, I told him to have I, tank tops. Okay. <laughs> then they're confirmed. They're on the way. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, one cool thing to highlight about the mythicstore.com is... They sell singles like a, you know, a classic magic store, but they also have these pretty cool things called... Um, like mythic packs or something packs, um, fortune, fortune packs. packs. So yeah. they actually take the concept of booster packs, but they put in uh, rares and other cool cards equal to the value that you pay. So they have yeah, various, awesome. yeah, they have various levels. Um, I happen to know that our producer has purchased one, and we kind of opened it one day on uh, kind of a call, and you know, just got to hear all the cards that he got. So it was like a cool little thing um, 
added to the store. So feel free to check that out. Uh, that's all I got. What do you, do you got anything? You got any last words, Carlin? Oh, it's just great. I enjoy set roulette a lot. I love seeing the uh, people come together, you know, make make some stuff, make some cool things, you know. Um, so I'm glad that you like it because we have plans to do it all again. Uh, I'm scrolling up because I lost the date. There we go. Um, <laughs> sets will be revealed for the next one on July 11th which makes our next set roulette tournament July 19th. And I believe those are both Sundays, but I'm just checking for us. Uh, July, July, July. Uh, so the 11th is a Saturday. So on uh, July 11th, on the Saturday, <laughs> will be the reveal of the sets. And then on the 19th, which is a Sunday, we'll be back at it again mm -hmm. here in the booth, hanging out, looking at all the cool things. Um, if you want to watch more coverage uh, next week on this channel there will be a historic tournament on Sunday um, and feel free to come and check us out doing that all over again where can people Wait. hang out with you that isn't right now uh, on my Twitch side, Track is Bad. We do mostly historic all the time and uh, pretty much brew requests every day awesome okay, well, I, I have a historic tournament coming up so I might give you a little message oh um, yeah and you can find me on Twitter at Mighty Linguini. You can find me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Mighty Linguini. Um, and that's actually it. Well, I Instagram too if you want. But uh, <laughs> I really enjoyed hanging out with you. I enjoyed hanging Absolutely. out with um, Power Dragon, with Brasky hanging out in our ears, with all of everybody that was chilling out in Twitch chat, probably yelling at all the things that we said that was wrong, but that's okay. Only a couple um, things. <laughs> and with, <laughs> with, all, uh, with all of the players, all signing up every month to do some cool magic. So thanks so much, and we'll see everybody next time. All right. Bye.